Cool. Okay, the Western, uh, the Greater Western Sydney turned party poopers last night. This was up against Carlton, of course, an opportunity for a couple of their champs to bow out with, uh, well, a win, but it wasn't to be, was it? No, it wasn't, TJ. It was one of the better performances right, uh, by, oh. by Carlton. Oh. Mate, but... you've got to read the play, Nathan. Yeah. Uh, the GWS Giants, Bill, what a, what a good finish to the season that it's been, and they'll play the Sydney Swans, who are also in good form. So be a beauty. it's going to be an exciting final. Yeah. Their midfield is brilliant. You know, Jacob Hoppe is playing wonderful football. Callan Ward is back to his best, uh, uh, going really well. Uh, they're forward, like Toby Green, Tim Taranto. So all their stars are going well. Whitfield, Haynes... So uh, they go into the final series going really well. I ask you a question about Tim Taranto. He's one of the best and fairest playing purely as a midfielder. Where do you think his best spot is? Because we've seen him pound for pound be able to take great marks. He's got forward craft that, uh, I mean, it's Eddie Bets like the way yeah, he looks Toby at it. Green. Yeah, he does it really yeah. well. So is he a 50-50? Is he a midfielder? Where do you That's think the finals? That's a good finals? question. I'd, I'd say he's 60-40 uh, yeah. midfield forward, but I don't think they feel he uses the ball as well as they'd like. So as a forward, uh, kicking goals is fantastic. What about Coniglio too? We've just yeah. forgotten about him, yeah. haven't we? He was yeah. a sub and did OK, so hopefully they play him again in the finals next week. It was all about Eddie Betts. He's 350th and last game, of course, and Levi Kasbold, who played 154 games. There he is there, Levi, actually carrying Eddie off, which is a good effort, but uh, 640 goals, four goals of the year for Eddie Betts. What a star he has been. And well done to you, Levi, for carrying him off at your last game too. A fan favourite, but also a bit of a whipping boy at Carlton, I reckon. Well, he, he, was, he was on that boat cruise um, <laughs> very early in his career, wasn't he? He was. Yeah. Can we just talk about Eddie Betts? I mean, I, I haven't had a lot to do That's with Eddie nice Betts. And I, you, you guys obviously have, but... Um, he's one of the most engaging people you'd ever want to meet, isn't he? And what he's had to go through from over the fence yep. is something that no-one... Uh, in society should have to put up with. Correct. But he puts up with that week in, week yeah. out. Surely we don't want his role as, like, unofficial ambassador to stamp out racism to end. Surely mm. there's got to be a role for him at the AFL. But, oh, there almost certainly will be, TJ. Yeah. The legacy piece to what he's already provided the AFL community is, is well established. It's just going to be enhanced, I would think, from, uh, from the, the arrangements that, that he will continue to, to work yeah. toward in, um, in hoping to make the it's, it's place a better one. It's worn him down. Yeah. You just have to yeah. look at him and the way he's playing. It's worn him down. He needs a bit of a rest, I reckon, yeah. as yeah. well. Mm. You know, yeah. you just... But it's just so unfair for anyone. Yeah. He's Carried indigenous out. to put up with yeah. it, but but when you're someone who oozes positivity yeah, like yeah, he does right. away from football, yeah. to put up with that negativity yeah. is just it's 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 cruel. It really is. Yeah, and, and TJ, the, the sense of inevitability about David Teague's uh, tenure, it, it seems to have actually reached his thinking as well. He spoke after the game, and uh, you can just get a sense where he now thinks this review's going. Yeah, I, I understand the club's going to make a decision. Um, Let's be honest, it doesn't look like it's going to go in my favour. But in terms of what I've done and what I've been able to control, I know who I am, I know why I've done it, and I'm really happy with that. So the timeline on this now is, is interesting. It comes right into focus. The club has had the contents of the review for some time and there's been a lot of apprehension with people who have got positions of power inside that football department. It's been uneasy for those people to be making decisions for next year that with them not knowing if they're involved. Lord, are you are well aware of that? You've been discussing it on Footy Classified and it could be tomorrow when all this comes to an official head with how the club may look in 2022 without David Teague as coach. Damo, in terms of handling this from the board, I mean, you've been scathing on North Melbourne and their situation and payouts and things like that. How critical are you of this? Oh, I can't remember seeing anything like it where a decision has been made, yet the key people aren't told. Uh, this is some vision that I saw. We'll get to that in a second, Damo. But you, your view on the board's handling of the Teague situation? I think it's been terrible, Kane. And, and the fact that the incoming president, Luke Sayers, has been on the board for nine seasons already. Now, that takes in the Brett Ratton era. Now, he wasn't party for the decision made on Brett Ratton, but as we know, Malthouse came in and went. Bolton came in and went. And now Teague has replaced Bolton, and it seems he is going as well. He's been on the board for that period as well. The announcement of the review, it had an effect and it had a disastrous one internally for that club and they've done nothing to comfort people privately or publicly throughout this. So mm. if that's the way they're prepared as a board, I'm talking yeah. at, the, at the board here, to, to treat the players or the people that they've empowered to run their football department while this review is going on with people outside the club. And I'm, I'm questionable of Jeff Walsh's involvement in this as well. He, his last position was as football operations boss at Collingwood and we saw what happened last year with that salary cap at Collingwood. So that's his last official role. He's now advising Carlton on what they should be doing with their club. So I'm with you, Kane. I think it's been a poorly handled affair for this football club from the moment they decided to go public with the review.
No, but, well, but so, see, that's, that's one of the problems. They actually went public with the review yeah. before the review started. Yeah. You know, suddenly three weeks down the track, they say the review's starting on Monday. And we say, well, hang on, what have you been doing the past month? You've been telling us there's a review. I think it's terrible for people like... Uh, sorry, I know uh, you, no, you, you I, don't I, want to be conflicted with your yeah, brother, but I, your brother's I, situation, David Teague's... No, it's, it's not a way to treat people. No. It's, uh, you're spot on. It's not a way to treat people. And, and I think even if people keep their jobs... Along, well, you're still trying to pick up the pieces of how everyone in the footy department is feeling because yeah, when right. you walk around for 12 weeks and you don't know whether you've got a job mm. or you have, well, suddenly you get told you've got your job. Well, you don't suddenly start walking around. <laughs> you know, mm. review, reviews start tomorrow and the people running the reviews don't even know if they've got their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's every, every club has a review, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Virtually every club every year has a yeah. review. So is it an even bigger job for the incumbent coach who takes over um, to pick all these people yeah. up, the ones that are still there, yeah. to get exactly. rid of that sort of, I guess, atmosphere that's been created. It's uh, not just the, the players the coach is going to have to yeah. deal with, it's everybody around the club because when a coach takes on, everybody wants the mm. coach's time and it's going to be even more tough. It, it can happen. I mean, Luke Burridge walked in and, and turned that club around immediately. So, so it can happen once a new person comes in. But mm. it does, I think this conversation, Brown, is more about the respect for the people that you've actually invested in to run your club to this point. Do you think it's Ross Lyon, like everybody else at the moment? Uh, I'm not convinced it is, but he's. I mean, clearly something's happened there. He, he doesn't go public the way he went last mm. Wednesday without thinking that's the well, right thing. When you thing say something's him. happened, well, something's happened in his mind to, to mm. go public. I mean, all what, the way through the year, he was. I can't talk about this. I'm going to respect David Teague in that position, and then, bang, he's just gone. Well, no, I'm. I'm I have been uh, sounded out. People like he, me. He ran into Lee Matthews. Well, I just think, if, what happens if he didn't run into Lee Matthews? He would have been <laughs> still <laughs> in the media. There was a conversation <laughs> in the car park that might have lasted well, 90 seconds. We're actually in the market for a new car. I don't know what to get, but I, I might ring Lee, actually. <laughs> <and just> say, <laughs> what are you thinking, mate? You know? Exactly. <laughs> Kane? Uh, yeah, well, the review's going to uh, take into a whole range of things. M mostly we're focusing on David Teague, but not a lot of people would have seen this because we were watching Max Gorn kick the sealer. Oh. This was really concerning. This oh. is uh, DeConning going down there, instantly concussed. You can see how serious it was. The players were so concerned. And the stretch is right there. So after a minute or two, they decided to let him get up and try and run off the ground. And this is what happened, Bill. Oh, no. Like, why would they oh. allow him to do that? So I just yeah. think the medical team at Carlton, now clearly they don't want to put players in harm's way. Their no. priority is the players. They wouldn't have done it maliciously. No. But with the injuries that they've had, really only Walsh and Wietering are the key players that have played all year. They've had injuries everywhere. Fisher, Cripps, McKay, Kerno, McGovern, all of them. Jones. So the review is going to take into that account the effect on the soft cap and the slashes there have clearly hit hard at Carlton.